Good morning everybody and welcome back to Visit File Coast. This morning, as you can see, we are in the beautiful Stanley Park in Blackpool. And this video is one of a couple that we're going to make this morning about this lovely park and its history. And some more information about it and where it is and, and how lovely it is. Because we've been, we've been promising to come and do this now for some time. And it's a beautiful spring morning, so we've taken advantage of it along with everybody else, I think. <laughs> To come along and do some, to do some um, footage of of the part today. We'll come back another day and do a full a full tour of it in in summer. So Stanley Park is the best park in the UK in 2009 and 2017, and that's official. That as awarded by Fields in Trust. We're about a, a mile and a half away from the tower. And we're near the zoo and Victoria Hospital. Now, the reason I'm turning around in circles is not just to give you a look at the view, but also because I'm trying to orientate myself to this map. I have a map. Are you ready? <clears throat> so I've come down the main driveway from the main entrance, which is, which is this road at the centre bottom. So you've got the, the, the cricket ground on your right hand side, main drive, and then the rose gardens at your left. And the sea is sort of behind us, and I've just seen Blackpool Tower as I came in. So the, the gardens, the, the plot radiates around that little wheel that you can see in the centre, which is the Italian gardens, which is what's at my right. So that kind of orientation, just before we leave the map, Straight in front of us is the lake and then across the other side of the road at East Park Drive is the model village. Well, no, the model village is on this side of the road, but the zoo and the Victoria Hospital. So you've got your, you've got your bearings now. We'll, we'll refer back to the map if we need to do in a minute. So it's March today. It's March, um, the end of March and a beautiful... A beautiful morning it is too. So I thought it was a, a good good opportunity to come and have a look at this 300 acre site, which opened, would you believe, in October 1926. Goodness, that's some time ago. So it's it's almost 100 years old. So I'm sure I'm sure they'll be um, planning a big a big spectacular when when that is um, upon us. So these are the, the copies of the Medici lions. Um, let's go and have a look at his face. I noticed somebody is not being able to resist the temptation to do an R on the plinth on which he stands, which is a shame, but nonetheless. A beautiful specimen of a chap, and there's his twin brother there looking the, the other way. And this is the Italian gardens that I just mentioned. And we've currently got the sun right in the middle of the shot, which is um, unfortunate. But I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll manage to correct that as we walk round. So this this short video is a look around the park as it stands today. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna just walk through the centre, and then you can see what there is and and what there is to to come and to come and enjoy in summer when you can get back to Blackpool or even this week if if you live locally enough so there's a fountain at the center of this um, pond in the Italian garden and I remember vividly dibbling my toes in this pond as a small child and I mean obviously you're not supposed to paddle in it or go in it and you can see why because the bottom's got a nice liberal coating of, of algae on it and I think, if I remember rightly, at one point, I think they were fishing that. Could be wrong, could be wrong, but if you know, if you know whether they were ever fishing it, pop a comment below and uh, share the information. So the clock tower that we're walking up to now is the Cocker Clock Tower. And it's named after Blackpool's first mayor, which is Dr William Cocker. Um, and on Heritage Open Days, you can usually go up the tower and take a look from the top. And I would imagine the view from up there is somewhat stunning. Oh, bottom's up. Some duck ducks. 
I don't know, it is there, aren't they cute? We're going to take a walk this way, round to the lake, and then back to the cafe. So if you do come to the park and you want to feed the, the birds, in the words of, um, was it Mary Poppins that fed the birds, took them to bag, please, please try and avoid giving them white bread. White bread is the worst thing that you can give them because that's, that's the avian equivalent of, of junk food. Um, so that's, that's not really any good for them at all. So if you've got bread, bring brown. Um, and even better still, things like peas or corn or lettuce or vegetables or seeds, things that, things that ducks would eat in their, normal, in their normal life. So this is the sports ground. Um, and the cricket ground is just around the side of it so all the sort of leisure facilities are all pretty much oh there it is there's there's the tower you can just see it there look if I zoom in you'll be able to see it better so now you believe me that the sea's that way so there's loads of things to do here there's a there's a big heronry as you drive along the main road between the park and the zoo, you can see the heron nests in the trees. The great big sort of floppy, tatty looking nests. Because um, they're great big birds, aren't they? Look a bit silly sat on a sparrow's nest. Um, but there's there's a huge amount of herons that, that live in live in the gardens. And that's the tower, that's the clock tower. So we're going to walk back round this way. Um, tennis courts, anything you want. We're going to walk back round this way and just go down to the lake and then back up to the cafe. And then we can finish on the, the sort of facilities, if you like. As you can see, it's a very popular place for dog walkers. And if you're going to bring your pooch, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Always clean your dog mock up. Um, and don't let it chase the birds either. Don't let it chase the birds. There's, a nice, there's nice little gardens tucked in corners. There's another one here, look. Can't quite remember what this one's called, but I can remember seeing it when it had just been replanted. Garden of Remembrance, that's the one. Beautiful. Isn't that lovely? And it's all, they look like herbaceous perennials. In fact, I'll tell you what, we'll cut that way, we'll, we'll go this way and cut a corner off. That's a lovely hellebore, that black one. Got some hellebores uh, flowering in my garden, they're otherwise known as Christmas roses. Let's have a look at this memorial stone. It's a while since I came to the park, actually. Didn't come last year, as you will have gathered, because I didn't do a video. Um, and, and frankly, I don't always have the time. Oh, it's for Jane Tweddle. Oh, that's lovely. We love you to the moon and miss you beyond the stars. Oh, that's sad. Poor Jane. Beautiful flowers. Planting in a lovely morning. And now we're coming down in the direction of the lake. Which way shall we go? We'll go this way, round to the bandstand. So Jane Tweddle was the, the poor unfortunate lady that died in the terrorist attack. Shocking, shocking turn of events it was. So there's, there's, as you can see, there's loads of sports facilities and we're coming up to the bandstand now. And if you are local to these parts, you'll probably know, or even if you just enjoy coming on holiday, you'll probably know that the bandstand is the site of many a summer concert. And it's a, it's a place where the Friends of Stanley Park and a, a super volunteer called Carol Thor organise bands every weekend in, in summer, under normal circumstances. Obviously not at the minute while we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but this area is absolutely 
rammed out when the events are on and absolutely packed full with people. And they have all sorts of things. They have brass bands and um, rock bands and ska bands and everything, you name it. Most of them are local bands, but, you know, they, they, they are excellent. And, in fact, going back again to when dinosaurs were on the earth, I remember ever so clearly sitting in the, on the seats around the edge of the bandstand as a kid watching the, the concerts even back then, even not the, all that time ago. So you might know that there's been a bit of an avian flu problem as well at the, at the park and quite a few of the beautiful swans have sadly died because of the avian flu virus, which is really sad and really unfortunate because the migratory birds come in from whichever country they come from and they carry different viruses with them, just like people have carried COVID. So that one's having a nap in the sunshine. So if you're wanting to visit um, and you particularly want to come to the lake, you need to just check and make sure that it is actually open because it's, if there is a, a, a problem with bird flu, they close the lake so that it's not being transmitted. So over there is the road, the main road between the, the park and the, in fact you can see the, the cars in the, the distance, it's the, the road between the zoo and the park and there's a footpath goes right round the back of the lake which I am not walking around this morning. And then we're back at this side back to where we go up to the visitor centre. So we'll go this way and have a look at this lovely garden. It looks like the, the gravel off the paths sort of slithered a bit, slithered down the, down the steps. But the, the park is, is just beautiful. I mean, there's a really active group of friends that anybody can join and they fundraise and, and do loads of gardening work and really support the work of, of Blackpool Council who obviously manage the land. You can see Blackpool Council here, look, collecting the rubbish. Um, and hats off to them because it really is a lovely park. Look at that blossom, isn't that beautiful? So if, if you are local and you're at a loose end and you like the great outdoors come and come and join in you can find information online easily there's also a quite comprehensive page on our live blackpool website about stanley park that's got information about the facilities and about um go on the history of it as well and photographs and things so i'll pop the link to that in the description below and you can have a, a good look at that so we're back kind of where we started at the Medici Lions. Ooh, that's a draft. That's a draft as you come through that corner. You wouldn't believe how much that pagoda thing stops the breeze. And of course all these borders are full of beautiful herbaceous plants in in spring and summer. But it's quite early in the year and as I said we'll We'll come back later. There's a guy cutting the grass. We'll come back later in the year and we'll do another video when the park's in full swing and a, a proper proper look round and a proper proper explore of all the far corners. So this is the cafe, the Art Deco Cafe. And that is um a beautiful building inside it's all beautifully restored obviously at the moment it's closed because of of covid but it will be open again very soon um, and just around here is the visitor center the visitor center opened on the 24th of august 2005 and was opened by lord derby in fact you can you can just see the region there through the through the trees which is at Church Street in the town centre. 
And just up here, there are some toilets as well, which are vital when you come somewhere like this. So there you go, that's the visitor centre. This one here. So I hope you've enjoyed that look around. And we will we will be back, as Arnie would have said. We will be back on a another beautiful day in summer to have a good look and a, a, a good look round when it's in full flower. So you'll have a lovely day now and from a beautiful morning in Blackpool at Stanley Park we will bid you a good day. But before we go, don't forget to give this video a like and make sure you've subscribed. See you soon. Bye.